Hi everyone. Hi friends. Welcome to my channel, Temples of Jesus. I don't know why, but I feel like really nervous to be making a video right now. And also we're, I feel like we're very upfront, up close and personal because I'm sitting not at my desk right now because my desk is a little bit, my desk is a reflection of my life right now. My desk is a little overwhelmed <laughs> with some things over there as well as like this general area with clothes and various items. Happy Sabbath. I think I just wanted to update you on a few things. And then I'm going to do another video, I think, where we'll read the Book of Mormon for a little bit. So I'll start with Sunday. Church was good today. And I felt like I was managing like the kids a lot in church today. Yeah, but it was still good. I got to hear part of the speakers. And then um, gospel doctrine, I needed to make some, or Sunday school, I needed to make some announcements for a youth temple trip coming up that I've been, that I need to do some more work on. And we have two different classes. So I was in both. And then I asked my husband to like go to the one class. And then it was 25 minutes later and he wasn't in that class sitting next to me. So I had to go find him. So it was just kind of interesting. That's not a big deal. Um, last weekend, it's, oh, this might be bothering you guys for me to be moving, um, was Patriarch Morgan's funeral. And it was at the stake center because he had touched a lot of people's lives and was very well loved and has a big family. So Brielle and I went a little bit early for the viewing and that was special and to say hi to sister Morgan. And then there were services and the services were beautiful and really nice. And we had people there to support us. Um, our youngest got a little bit rambunctious, but we had two other, we had Nene and auntie there who were her different nannies when she was younger. Um, so that was good for them to be able to be there to help. And what I wanted to share was, uh, it was a really special day on Saturday last week because my husband has some health issues, uh, in his cancer recovery and he's had a like a endoscopy and they ended up taking several biopsies and we didn't know results yet from those biopsies, but everything is related to his thyroid cancer with two surgeries and then radiation. So as you can imagine, like the throat area. Um, and then also now actually in his throat, throat, like down his vocal cords, you know, down, sorry if this grosses anybody out, but like in this area, right, of throat. Um, so it's kind of obvious or common sense, but maybe not. Um, so getting sick with a cold or the flu or COVID or a stomach bug or just like anything, if you think about it, like that's either respiratory in that area or if it's like the stomach flu and stuff is coming or norovirus, like stuff's coming up. That would also be very painful when he's already in pain. So we take a lot of extra precautions. Um, <clears throat> and I received my endowment in the end of March and Patriarch Morgan was really wanting to, he came to my endowment to support me and Sister Morgan, they're so sweet. Um, and then he was hoping to seal our family by this summer, like maybe around June, after Jason got his, my husband got his um, endowment. And he's been, he says he's spiritually ready for his endowment. Although there's, you know, some other just life challenges going on, but he is progressing spiritually, which is great. Uh, but um, I don't think it's any, uh, sorry, I'm kind of stumbling today. 
I don't think it's any um, policy or anything, but it's just kind of best practice. And our bishop prefers, and I told like I totally agree that if it's your very first time, or you've not been to the temple since you were a youth, and now you 40, 40 years old, which was my case, like before getting your endowment, even if you were worthy to go with a limited use recommend to do um, proxy baptisms and confirmations first. So with go he's been ready to get his endowment and we actually almost got it when we were visiting my parents in Idaho a few months ago. And then I remembered about baptisms and the things, the thing about, um, uh, the thing about the endowment and the initiatory is he can have his N95 and his like goggles or they're not goggles, but they're like, you know, just a clear set of glasses on because of the close contact. And just in general, he has a lot of extra fear and anxiety on top of, um, like I already explained, like the throat area. And, you know, we do want to avoid having him be sick when we're getting testing done and he's recovering from cancer. It happens of course, but, um, he did get a cold after we went to Hawaii after not going anywhere for two and a half years in June and he was okay, but still just from other reasons, uh, he continues to like, we continue to mask up and be, have a lot of protocols. So, um, so then realizing like, oh no, we should probably do proxy baptisms because Jason's a convert to the church a year, about a year and a half ago. And so he's never been in the temple other than when he and I went funny, not funny enough, but like kind of full circle in 2003 when the Redlands temple was, um, I'm sorry if it bothers you. I'm talking really monotone today. Um, like when you could do an open house when I was pregnant, when we were pregnant with DJ, uh, we went through that open house. So he's been in a, and then he went with somebody else at some point for like the San Diego one that was years before that for an open house. So he's been in a temple, but not a, uh, uh, sorry, I can't think of the word, like a blessed temple or an active temple. Um, I know what it's called. I just can't think of it. And so, so I've got this like one hair right here. Go away. Um, so been ready for the endowment. Best practice to go for proxy baptisms. I also like think it's good along with the bishop and others that he should go do that first. But in the baptismal font, he being dunked, even if the person has a mask on, um, Jason being baptized by proxy would obviously have a mask off. And so that was really stopping him for a long time, like for six, seven, eight months now, six, seven. Yeah. Um, to not move forward with the temple. And, you know, I feel this sense of urgency to be sealed to my sweet babies and my husband, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've been a little irritated with each other this week, but I think we're, we're getting better today. Um, but to be sealed to, to my family and, you know, feeling the sense from before spring general conference that I really needed to get my initiatory and endowment done before general conference. So I got it done before. And then as you know, like if you're following general conference and some YouTube YouTubers and different things, uh, there's just, um, and then your own spiritual sense. And my spiritual sense is that things are hastening. God's work is hastening and Jesus is coming and they're absolutely urging us, or that's what I'm hearing because I wasn't an endowed member and I'm not sealed to my family. Um, urging, like, do it now. If you're not endowed, go get endowed. If you're married and not sealed, go get sealed. And so I take that really seriously. So it's been challenging for me to be patient. Uh, man, I just feel like I'm going in circles. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So the funeral was last Saturday at like 11 o'clock in the morning at the Redlands Stake Center. And we've talked a lot about this like 
proxy baptisms, even coming up, my therapist came up with an idea of like, well, he can keep his stuff on and not do an actual proxy baptism, but go and be a witness and then also go and get confirmed because he wouldn't have to take anything off. And I ran that by him that same night that I had therapy. And he, like, he was like, yeah, that's a good idea, which was definitely an improvement um, of like not just shutting it down. But anyways, um, I think that was a step like in the right direction to have him realize that there was like other options for him to go. So last Saturday, okay, one more thing in case you don't remember, or this maybe is your first video watching. Patrick, Patrick Morgan was very sick with um, stage four cancer. And I think he only had like a few weeks to live, said the doctors. And this was like last year. So he went almost another full year of living and actively being a sealer in the temple and a patriarch giving blessings until just about uh, seven or eight weeks ago with this stage four um, cancer and not being in pain because of this pain patch that he had that was like such a wonderful miracle. And um, so around like February, uh, someone brought up in Sacrament about, you know, oh, I think it was the bishop. He brought up, you know, Patriarch Morgan because he was in our ward and Jason really looked up to Patriarch Morgan even before like he was baptized and our family was going to church full time um, because he's an amazing man and has had all the experience, temple president, patriarch, temple sealer. Um, Bishop was bringing up, you know, Patriarch Morgan's coming up on his 1000th blessing. And so anybody in the ward or if you're thinking about getting your blessing, like you might be the one who hits the 1000th mark um, and, you know, probably good to get it done soon. So I kind of pushed Jason towards that only because Jason said he really wanted his, when he was ready, he really wanted his patriarchal blessing from Patriarch Morgan. He wasn't ready, at, but like, so with my encouraging, I'm like, obviously I want this to be your decision and you to be ready and keep in mind that it's been shared with us that this man may have literally three, four weeks left to be with us. And he was still giving blessings. So it had nothing to do with the 1000th blessing. Don't worry. I was just kind of bringing that up. Um, and so he agreed and we went and got his patriarchal blessing and he wasn't ready. And we kind of did like an interview or like a whole one hour, uh, you know, talking to the patriarch ahead of time. And he's so great in explaining, um, uh, <clears throat> like the lineage. And he even had, you know, a whiteboard with like, um, a pointer that he was talking with us that he was just wonderful. And I think, yeah, he definitely knew that like Jason wasn't, wasn't ready, but his heart was in the right place and he's on the right track. And so he um, proceeded with giving him a blessing and it was a beautiful blessing. Um, J Jason's not really looked at it or read it probably because it's overwhelming with how wonderful it was, but also he's just kind of not um, you know, wasn't quite ready for it yet, but it was, uh, and Patriarch Morgan sat down right afterwards. And he said, I think that's the longest blessing I've ever given. And it did end up being like four pages or something, lots of good things in there. Uh, so I think the adversary is working hard on Jason too, because he is such a righteous spirit with so much work to do as, as all of us are. Oh my gosh. I hear my four-year-old downstairs and I'm the only one at the house. And so that means she's in the kitchen. Okay, hold on. Hold that thought and hopefully I can hold that thought. <sighs> oh, sorry. I hit recording <laughs> before I meant to. <laughs> so she was totally downstairs. My kids are wild creatures, mostly my four-year-old, who's the teeniest, tiniest thing, which doesn't matter, but literally getting up on the counters like the kitchen counters and walking around with their bare feet and it's just disgusting and I can't break them from it. And she was up in all the candy and the sprinkles and all the things getting a lollipop. Um, so I needed to manage that. Aren't Twizzlers surprisingly delicious? Like I'm, I've always been more of a chocolate person, but now it's like there's sugar in it. I'll take it, man. 
It was good. I had two Twizzlers. I don't know where I was in the story, but basically Jason got his patriarchal blessing. It was beautiful. It was like the 1009th blessing I think he had gotten from the patriarch. And then we were excited for him to seal us because again, he wasn't in pain, even though, you know, he was quite advanced. And this was back in, I think, February. Um, so we didn't have that chance to get sealed in the summer. And, we, you know, we're in October now and um, have yet to have Jason endowed. But I've been patient because, like, I'm not going to rush someone, even though he says he's spiritually ready. Like, I can't rush his, his fear or anxiety either. Um, or I don't want to, like, it just doesn't feel right to do that. Um, and believe me, I've been a huge advocate for a lot of things. So I don't know how to address that to you public that I have taken a lot of actions to try and support this person to get other types of support anyways. Um, you can't certain things you just can't it won't work and it won't matter unless you you choose to do it okay so last saturday the funeral is at 11 a.m we have people in town who um nanny and auntie who were previous nannies who were put in our path when we were totally not active and jason was not a member uh starting when my nine-year-old was um an eight-month-old uh and happened to be active you know member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and then for my four-year-old when she was just about four or five months old placing auntie or crystal into our path um again not active uh in the church and she was definitely not looking for anything to do extra because she had so much on her plate but god like brought those people together and they're basically family for us now. And Nene's like a grandma and she's, um, Crystal is a wonderful friend. Uh, and they were coming into town and then I just knew there would be people there at the funeral across the street or in the same parking lot, basically as the temple. And I was, you know, showering, getting ready in the morning. And I just had this, I wasn't even thinking about anything or I was thinking about other stuff. And you know how the spirit works. Like it just came in my mind. Jason is going to do proxy baptisms today. And I'm like, okay. Um, I think it was a combination, honestly, of the Holy Ghost and also Patriarch Morgan um, because of how much and how excited he was about our covenant path as a family. And obviously it was his services that day. And we had all that like support. And so I like got out of the shower dripping wet, of course, like a towel on. Sorry, I shouldn't get into all that, but I didn't even dry off. I just started texting. I did like a group text and I was like group text. Cause I don't do group texting. So I just want to make sure they knew, whoa, way too many details uh, to like our friends that were in town and another person and like the Bishop and hey, like today's the day, let's do proxy baptisms for Jason. And everybody was like, I can baptize him and um, we can watch the kids and, you know, whatever. And then I wasn't getting a reply. Um, anyways, I wasn't, I was hoping for one additional um, like support person as a priesthood holder to be there. And so uh, I literally like forwarded the message in a screenshot to the stake president, which was fine. Cause I had just spoken in like, he had called me to speak in stake conference kind of jokingly, but apparently for real back in March when I was getting my temple endowment. Um, and because I was like, you know, getting ready and actually kind of running a little bit late for what time I wanted to get to the services. I, I sent him a screenshot and I was like, Hey, Prez, like P R E S. <laughs> but can you, can you just take a look at this and help us out <laughs> coordinating this? So as I was getting ready, I shared with Jason, Hey, like get an extra pair of, you know, he had, he had like 
you know, white boxers or whatever from his baptism over a year ago. And I was like, bring a pair of white socks. And do you have your temple recommend? Like, where is it? And he showed me. And so he's not, uh, I mean, he knew clearly like what I was thinking, um, even though I wasn't telling him outright. And so he was participating in getting those things. So that's a good sign. And then all these people, and we're going to be right there. So super, super long story shortened up. Last Saturday was wonderful because we were able to go and celebrate the life of president, um, pa president, patriarch, bishop, brother, elder, all the things, Morgan. Um, and literally right after went across the street to go into the temple, even though there was group baptisms going on and had a beautiful experience. And Jason was baptized and he was be able to be baptized for grumpy. Oh my gosh. If my in-laws watch this, but he was able to be baptized. Dang it. I hate editing. Okay. Just keep it on the down low. Okay. No, I'm going to have to edit this out. He was able to baptize five of his ancestors, and um, then he was able to baptize me for four of my ancestors, and then he was able to um, be confirmed for them. Yeah? Thirsty. You're thirsty? Mm -hmm. Okay, come get a drink of water in here. He was confirmed, and then he actually confirmed me and then we felt wonderful and we ended up having the bab, even though there was this big group of people there and it ended up being a group of missionaries who funny enough, I saw a few days, like, whatever, I don't need to interrelate all the things. Um, it ended up being an empty, clear baptismal font, which was like ideal for Jason. And um we asked the person, not the temple president, but the person who's in charge of like that area told him the circumstance and asked him to like say a few words and if we could have a prayer. And so we did that first before doing the baptisms and it just was really special. And Jason definitely felt the spirit when he was being baptized and then, excuse me, felt the spirit. Uh, I think when he was baptizing me as well. So he felt, you know, he felt something. Um, which is obviously a good thing for being in the temple for the first time. We got changed, went outside, you know, said our goodbyes to the state president who was so kind to come and be a part of that, um, to uh, support our family in that. And um, Jason and I were like sitting on the, Let's see, I'm going to have to talk about, I'm going to say, I'm going to say one of his gram grandmas and grandpas. Um, that I had done grandma's work of his from last October for baptisms. And so grandpa was waiting, but well, sorry, Nana and grumpy. Okay. So I had done Nana's work, um, last October and that she was probably waiting for grumpy to have his work done. And grumpy was probably waiting for him to have his work done to go be with like Nana. However, that works, you know, in the spirit world and such. And now that happened. And um, so we were kind of sitting on the bench and it, there's clouds and it's this clear, beautiful day. We're just sitting on the bench um, chatting, you know, how did you feel? I was asking him, you know, how'd you feel? Did you have his, did you feel the spirit? And he was talking to me. And then right as we walked out and it was still sunny, like there was sunshine all over, but there were the clouds, but there was still sunshine out all over, like shining down. But right as we walked out from under the eave, it started these big drops of rain. And I just immediately said, I was like, that's, that's grump, that's grumpy crying, like happy tears, um, uh, for, for you doing his work. And then a few minutes after that, it had stopped raining and we were still kind of hanging out in the parking lot because our kids had gone away 
for lunch with friends and we're waiting for them to come back. But these two big, beautiful butterflies are about 20 to probably about 20 feet up in the air, not near a tree or anything, just like in the parking lot, kind of where we were and just swirling around each other and kind of staying in the same spot for 45 seconds, maybe 60 seconds. And I was like, Jason, he was talking to another person. I was like, Jason, look, it's Nana and Grumpy. And I don't believe like it's actually Nana and Grumpy, but like it was like, it was the sign of Nana and Grumpy can be together now. And so some of you might think that that's silly, but um, anytime I see a hummingbird, like hoovering, hovering, hoovering, hovering, um, you know, near the kitchen window or, or a butterfly or what have you, I do feel that oftentimes like it's my grandma June, like saying hi. And again, I don't believe that the actual like butterfly or anyways. Um, so it was just a really special day to have the services and then for Jason to get his proxy baptism. So there's nothing stopping him now from getting his endowment. And I guess he actually made an appointment to have his endowment done yesterday, but then needed to cancel it on Friday. Um, and this was news to me because he didn't tell me, but there's no bitterness there. Um, but then the bishop told him that they were missing a form. Um, I think it's better to wait more than just one week since like baptisms anyways for him to get his endowment, but hopefully that'll happen in November. And then we can get sealed to our babies, hopefully in December before the end of the year. So it's just a really, really beautiful thing. So grateful. God is amazing. Um, so I've been feeling kind of down the last couple of weeks, especially this week. Uh, but it's kind of been building like the last few weeks where I feel myself not reaching for health and things that are in my control health. I've just been trying to make it like through the day and be there for present for my kids when I see them and working full time and trying to get my assignments done and not get behind too much and really do a good job in my new role. Um, I actually come up on 15 years for my work anniversary uh, in just a couple few weeks, but I'm in a, a newer ro role right now. What? You're done? Can you throw the wrapper? Oh, <laughs> I hope you didn't hear that. Hold on. <sighs> she had to go number two, my four-year-old. My seven-year-old is here too. My husband is out doing service right now with my son, but they just started banging on the door. So they're home after just an hour. And, and I haven't, I've just been trying to get by the day, like day by day, but that's been kind of hard for me because I've chosen health since I've graduated from MEND and chosen that I'm going to stay in health. So to be in this place of uh, reaching for things that are healthy for me, um, like mentally and physically too, but then kind of slipping into or regressing a little bit into like trying to do hacks or like workarounds for trying to still have energy or like get the things done or, or feel a certain way and reaching for things that are like not in health that are more in illness has just been a hard place to tread the last couple weeks. So anyways, the last few days I've been feeling bet down. And I think part of it's just like his waiting for his biopsy results from two weeks ago. And then we got the biopsy results on Wednesday and it's not cancer, but other treatment does need to be done. Um, so, but it explained and gave some validation to like why he's in so much pain in his, his throat and his esophagus and such. So um, yeah, we, we just, we hadn't been getting along since Wednesday until maybe like we're kind of repatching things up like yesterday and today is Sunday. So getting a little bit better, but I was feeling super down yesterday and <clears throat> now my son's going to come in. <coughs> um, 
yesterday, Saturday, um, our temple's closing for two weeks, which may not sound like a, lot, a long time, but being an ordinance worker and also someone who just really loves the temple, like, it feels like a really long time for me. So I hadn't been since Tuesday and I was like, okay, well, I booked an appointment for five o'clock or six o'clock. And then I canceled it because I was feeling down, which then made me feel even more kind of down that I would actually cancel like a temple appointment um, because I was choosing to like not be in health. And my, I know I need to give myself a break and love myself, but that actively felt like choosing illness to um, cancel a temple appointment instead of going um, uh, just so I can like mope around and feel sorry for myself. So I canceled that appointment and my husband was also um, out, which is great because he like never, ever goes out, almost never goes out. And he was out for many hours yesterday helping um, a ward member move, which was wonderful. And so the kids and I had some time together and cleaned up the house and but then it was just kind of free in the afternoon. He came home, he got showered and basically the kids were all doing their own thing. It was like four 30 in the afternoon. And I just went and like laid on my pile of clean clothes on my bed and was just going to like lay there and feel bad, <laughs> like feeling down, um, which is not typical for me, but it's also not incredibly rare. Like it will happen a couple times a year or whatever. Sometimes it's just for half a day. Sometimes it's for several days and sometimes it's for a few weeks, but it's not like debilitating, but it doesn't feel good at all. And it feels like super slow motion when you're in that space. Um, and I just, what helps me is having the perspective, um, from other cycles of that since I was four, you know, 14 years old of having depression. Um, after in my, kind of early twenties or mid twenties, I realized that when I came out of it, I felt good again. And then when I was in like healthy and not depressed, I realized, okay, I always come out of it. So then I kind of made a promise or I just like put it in my brain really hard, or I don't know what the word is, but like to remember next time I'm feeling down to have that perspective and remember, okay, I'm going to feel down and I'm going to let myself feel that way and give myself permission to like feel depressed or down or fill in the blank, not feel things, not be interested in things, but that I won't feel like, cause my personality is just wherever I am in that moment. Um, whether it's a brand new mom with a newborn, for some reason, I think that I'm going to have a newborn forever. I just like, don't get that perspective that yes, of course, like a newborn will age and like get older. So anyway, sorry, tangent, but um, I now have taught myself and it's been really helpful that when I am feeling down or depressed, that I have that perspective of, um, I will always come out of this and I do, and I always come out of it. And I feel like giving myself permission to feel down or depressed, um, or angry or whatever it may be. And then having that perspective too, and not trying to force myself out of it. I think it actually helps me move through it quicker, but even if it doesn't help me move through it quicker, like it is true, you know, I am letting myself feel that way, but I've been, a, I, it's funny because I've been a bit more resistant to, I haven't been as patient with myself or gr uh, graceful with myself this time since I have learned how to be like in, in health from the men's program and graduating from the men program in around April because now I do know like how to be in health. So how, like, why am I feeling down and not able to come out of it? But I also knew from that program, which was so helpful. And I'm sorry for talking about the men program again, because I know a lot of people are very interested in it and it's a pretty, I don't know if the right word is exclusive, but it's like a, a program in Southern California, specifically through Loma Linda hospital and it's in person and they don't offer virtual and I currently don't know where else they have these sort of programs, but I am going to try and find out more information because man, I feel like everybody needs mend, M-E-N-D, mend. Um, I guess this iteration, I've just been 
like less patient with myself or feeling down because then I, I've been having that perspective of like, oh, well now I'm not going to be in health anymore or know those, those tools and those skills anymore. But that's not the case either. So, wow, I really set things up. Um, so 430 pile of clean clothes on the bed, just th kind of threw myself on the bed. The kids are Jason's back home shower. The kids are just doing their thing. And I'm just like, all I'm going to do is lay here or maybe turn on the TV. I've just been disinterested in um, like free time. I've just been not really interested. I don't know if you can hear my kids yelling. Oh, that's not nice. Oh my gosh. I really just want to wrap up this video. So I wanted to share, I've been feeling down. It's not why I've not been on YouTube. I've been working really long hours this week. Um, like Monday night and Friday night, I worked until really late at night. Um, and then the other three nights in between, I went to bed super early because of just feeling kind of overwhelmed and, and such. Um, but I'm going to make some adjustments that are in my control to be reaching better for health and just kind of one step at a time. And then, uh, like celebrate or build on the momentum on those successes. And then hopefully I'll be back in a better place of health. I think my chemi chemistry is kind of off right now too. And some of that is my fault, um, with certain things, but, um, I wanted to share about that really special experience, which there was a lot more to it, but that prompting for Jason to do the proxy baptisms after the services last Saturday and how that all came together. And it was really beautiful. Um, and then, uh, why do I feel like something else happened? DJ's family dropped him off up at the MTC this week, which is awesome to prepare for his Japan mission. And, um, man, I feel like there's something else. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and just read a daily devotional real quick, if you're okay with that. And, oh, I was just going to share too, like I was been feeling down, but, oh, laying on my laundry. Okay. So then I was, I can get ready really fast. I can take a 15 minute shower. It's, I can get ready really fast. So I took a 15 minute shower. Um, and just ask, you know, not asked, but like let Jason know I was going to the temple and was he fine with that since I was just like leaving him with the kids. And he said, yeah. So I go out to the temple with sandals on, of course, and there's tons of traffic. And then it starts pouring and lightning and thundering and hailing. And I'm like, I'm not going to make it for this six o'clock, even though I had plenty of time. Um, somehow, miraculously, like I got there right at six o'clock which is too late. Cause I need to, oh my gosh, I need to change and stuff, but they let me in for the six o'clock and I did my five initiatory names of family members. And, um, it, it Saturday afternoons and evenings, I'm not sure if this is how it is for all temples or just our temple, but those are Spanish sessions for endowments and for other things. And a lot of the, um, ordinance workers are, are Spanish speaking. And because I'm an ordinance worker, like I know the initiatory and I thought that that would just be a nice experience to hear it in Spanish. So it was also just this really nice experience of having the initiatory ordinances done in Spanish. And then they offered me an English card and I was like, no, it's, it, I'm, it's good because I'm an ordinance worker. Um, so that was really beautiful listening to it for five family members, um, but in Spanish, uh, and then afterwards going to the ceiling room and it, I just was filled with like the spirit and peace and joy and like took me out of this place of feeling down. And that's why I forced kind of forced myself to go because I knew the temple was closing for two weeks and I'd feel like whatever, I'm just going to use the word like guilty for not having gone when I was either just going to lay around, like feeling bad for myself or have been able to go to the temple, which I love so much. Um, so walked down, walked into the ceiling room 
And apparently they had just gotten out of a endowment session, which I wasn't expecting. So there was just like people everywhere. Like there wasn't even a chair and, um, you know, it had been a, a, a Spanish speaking session and there was just like a different spirit in there. And it just felt really wonderful to like be walk into that room and not have it be, you know, an empty room, which actually I, I enjoy that a lot of the time, like just an empty, I'm the only one in there. There's just, you know, another person, but to just go in there with like all these people full in the celestial room. So I went and sat down to read scriptures. There was, I like made a little place on a sofa, but other people were literally standing because there was, there wasn't seats. Started just reading the scriptures, wasn't really on a time limit. And then it started thundering um, while I was in the celestial room on the sofa reading the scriptures. Uh, and if you remember, like I do storm temple photography, so I love thunder, lightning storms, um, and temples, but it's always on the outside. Obviously I don't, uh, it's kind of obvious, like I don't do it on the inside, but I wasn't even thinking about photography, but just so you know, like I love storms and I love temples and I love temple storms, like storms at the temple. Um, so I just was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I just had a Spanish initiatory session walking into all these saints in the celestial room, reading the scriptures, comfortable on a beautiful sofa and hearing this thunder outside. And then you hear the rain and then it just got harder and harder and harder. And it just, I, I didn't think by any means it was the second coming, but I was just like, this is so how I would want it to feel. I'm doing a video, I'm doing a video, sweetie. I'm doing a video, baby. I'm ready my Okay, go get your cup, baby, from the bathroom. That is not my cup. Okay, we'll go downstairs and get a cup. I'm sorry, I'm tired of pausing it. Um, just like that feeling of just this, not excitement, but yes, excitement but more of just like this joy and like, it just felt right. And it definitely felt right to be in the temple as I was thinking about, you know, when the Lord comes again soon, which I'm feeling that stronger again, uh, that feeling stronger again, um, it kind of goes through waves where it feels strong and then it kind of not subsides, but like lessens. And then it starts to come back and just like all signs point to Christ coming soon. And I don't know what soon means. I don't know if it's literally like this week, uh, or if that's, you know, 2030 or 2033, but it is getting closer from the time I started feeling that in 2018. Obviously that was, I can't really do math really great, but that was, I think it was five years ago. Didn't come yet. But at the time I didn't feel like he was coming right then. I just started to feel like Jesus is coming. Um, Anyways, in the celestial room with the thunder, with the rain, with saints, with the scriptures, feeling at peace and just thinking about the Lord coming again and like being in my temple clothing, my white dress. I just, I wish we could just all like every day, just be wearing like white temple clothing our our white dresses and our, our white shoes. And I just think it's so beautiful for, for all the clothing that is white. Um, ah, I just love being in the temple. So I, and then I just felt all this like forgiveness and love for my husband. And like, I just need to love him and stop judging him and just be patient with him. And, you know, just these feelings of, of healing. I just felt so much healing in the celestial room, which I'm just so glad I went. And then I came home and I took my friend Jared's um, advice. Um, I was supposed to be doing an interview with him literally during this time frame right now um, from Christian Homestead. I'm going to be interviewing him about him and his life and, uh, you know, his military service and his mission and his testimony and his family. And i um, really excited about that. But I, because I was feeling down, I just, you know, let him know, like, I'm just not really in the headspace for it right now. So I want to move it out a week or two. And he was really sweet and called me and we talked and, you know, I told him he, I was feeling down and uh, he, 
<clears throat> it's funny. He's, I feel like he's so similar to me and his wife, his sweet wife, Jenica too, where if someone was telling me that who, who was a friend or, you know, someone that you've started to know, I would try and offer up unsolicited, like, well, you know, just remember to take care of yourself and like be kind to yourself. So he totally started saying that sort of thing that I would do to somebody else of like, you know, just be nice to yourself, you know, get like a scented candle or like something that's, that helps you relax. And, and, you know, he was just saying some nice things. And then he was like, eat some comfort food, which is usually not something I tell people, but it like gave me permission and I'm gluten-free, but gluten doesn't necessarily bother me very much. I found out from me having it for a month, about two months ago, but I do feel better off of it. So I'm like, I'm going to the temple and then I'm going to Kentucky fried chicken, <laughs> but it was still raining and like hailing and lightning after the temple. So thank you, Jared. Um, he doesn't want, he doesn't watch my videos, but thank you. Um, that was good advice because it did ma make me feel better coming home from the temple, really in a joyful spirit. So grateful to have gotten to the temple before it closes for two weeks, especially with feeling like Jesus is coming soon. And again, I'm not saying it's tomorrow, but maybe you never know. Um, got Kentucky Fried Chicken, made an extra stop at McDonald's to get like the chocolate chip cookies, got home, put the kids to bed. Uh, it started really thundering loud at our house and my kids love thunderstorms too, but of course, like at bedtime, they were scared. So the kids kept coming down while we were eating our Kentucky fried chicken and our cookies, but we didn't care. We usually care when they come down after it's like our time, but we didn't care. And I just, you know, kind of snuggled with my husband for a bit and it felt good after, you know, a few days of us kind of not getting along. That's it. I just feel like I've rambled for so long about nothing specific. My kids are out in the hallway or in the bedroom like hollering. Oh, they're excited about a new chair. Nothing's wrong. They're excited about new furniture. Today is the 16th, um, October 16th, the importance of integrity. Alma 41, four, um, so this is from Daily Joy, a daily devotional by President Russell M. Nelson. Um, and the topic for today is the importance of integrity. And in Alma chapter 41, verse 14, it says, Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful unto your brethren. Deal justly, judge righteously, and do good continually. And if you do all these things, then shall you receive your reward. And President Nelson says about this, integrity includes virtue, cleanliness, and honesty. In our world, there is so much of deceit. We learn of cheating in the classrooms, cheating in business, cheating in marriage, and so on. Even though these acts may not be discovered by others, the soul of a cheater suffers. Self-respect vanishes, conscience is warped and character crumbles. That's interesting. I've never, and that's the end of that. I, I don't know that I've ever heard what he had to say, like end kind of in that place of, um, I don't want to say the negative, but like what the consequence is and not then like bring it up to like on the next page, the very last sentence is, freedom from self-slavery is true liberation, right? Like it kind of ends on a positive note. Um, or, you know, on another page, um, that is how it should be. That is hope for us. Even though maybe he was saying those other things that were consequences, it always kind of ends. Um, on another one, we, uh, we become disciplined, we become disciples, we become more sacred and holy like our Lord. Uh, another one, you may be the very one to open the door of, to his or her salvation and understanding of the doctrine of Christ. So that's, that's interesting that I don't really have much to say about it. I just, that's the first one I think I've read where it's almost, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments. If you're still here, bless your heart. And please subscribe, 
like, share, comment. How's everybody's week been going? I loved last Sunday when I was able to make a couple of videos. I had asked like to put some wins in the comments. And um, one of the wins, uh, I, I'll read it in another video, but she shared that in their state conference coming up, they're singing a song about temples that she composed. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And then there was a really other nice win from another commenter. And I can't remember it off the top of my head, um, but I appreciate you all commenting. I like to reply to all comments. It was a very busy week this week. Um, along with some um, extra stressors in life that are really going on right now. And so uh, I have read all of your comments um, and I will be responding to everybody's comments, even if it's late. I love President Nelson saying, you know, let us, let us judge righteously. We should be judging, um, but judging for safety, physical safety, spiritual safety, definitely. And let's try to avoid unrighteous judgment. Absolutely. And I think especially unrighteous judgment or judgment that isn't righteous for like our own or our family safety, whether it's spiritual or physical, when we make judgments, let us keep them where they need to stay, which I think is with ourselves. Um, not in all situations, but, you know, I would ask and pray that anybody who is, you know, kind of in a public forum, whether it's Instagram or um, someone who maybe has a lot of friends at church or just other places of, of avoiding sharing their own personal judgments that perhaps aren't righteous judgments. They're just judgments in general and keeping them to yourself. And then asking yourself, am I judge? Is this a righteous judgment? If it is a righteous judgment, is it necessary for me to be sharing with a large group of people? Or if this is just a kind of not neutral, but whatever is, a, you know, I don't know if there's different levels, but I'll just call it like a neutral judgment. Let's keep that to ourselves because that might be harmful or dissenting or like divisive for, for others. Cause we're all so different. Um, but if it's like a negative judgment or a judge judgment of someone else's righteousness, when it's obvious that they're having good intentions definitely write it in your journal, like keep it, keep it to yourself, do your best to keep it to yourself and question, why am I feeling the need to talk about this with others? Um, I didn't really want to end on that note. So judgment is not, I've kind of had this issue over the years where I feel like any judgment, even if it's just in my mind, like any judgment is wrong. Like I should not be judging others, but it's such a natural thing but I am trying to teach and train myself for just even my own thoughts, like not even talking to people about, about it at all. But no, there is a time for um, definitely for judging like situations. And I really learned that when I was pregnant, because there were certain times when I was like, if anybody comes near me, like I will literally, okay, let's not go down there. But I realized it as becoming a mother, like, yes, I will make judgments when it comes to physical safety and now as I'm back in the gospel and fully, you know, not fully, but like very con convicted and converted, um, wow, do I need to be making a lot of righteous judgments about so many different things and it's going to be a hit or miss, but thank goodness that we have heavenly father and the Holy ghost and the living prophet and the church resources that we have and the gospel doctrine that we have. Um, to go in reference that is legitimate, um, as we've talked about in other videos. God bless, take care, subscribe, comment, like, share, goodbye. Did I rhyme there? I don't know. I'm not sure if I rhymed there. All right. See y'all. Love you.